church. And JC and Mary Catherine, why is this building important and how does it, how is it used? How does it work in school life? Well, it's used for our weekly prayer services that we have. Usually, normally have mass here and this is where we have it and it's a central part to our learning community because as a Christian school, we want to base our education off our faith. Um, how many times a week do you meet in this building and how many times a week do you have mass? Uh, usually once a week, unless there's a special occasion or a special holy day. So. But mass is offered every single day for, for the boarders that do want to come or other students that do want to come. Okay. And the school is connected to an abbey and a monastery, right? Yes, sir. Um, tell me a little bit about how, how do the monks participate in school life? What's their role in school life? Well, a lot of our teachers actually are monks. The headmaster is a monk, and we have four of the monks that are in the school this year. And also, when we have a big mass for a big feast day or something, the monks will join us for that mass. All right, another reason, uh, the one thing that sticks out to me about that church is the main cross up there in the altar, which is the focal point of the church, I think. And also, behind there are the choir stalls, and that's where the monks pray, and they pray five times a day in those stalls. And they face towards each other, and they chant back and forth with each other, which symbolizes their community life and how they are brothers. This here is the boys' dorm, and I've been aboard it since my ninth grade year, and I've really enjoyed it. The way the boys' dorm works is, as a freshman, you have your own hall where you can go and get away from everybody else, and no upperclassmen are allowed up there, which I really enjoyed as a freshman. And it also gave us a chance to sh strengthen our bond with the other freshmen in our class. And also, after that, um, you're pretty much dispersed evenly throughout the dorm. So, so all after the freshman year, all the grades are mixed together? They're mixed together. Okay, now, do you room with the same age student, or do you? If you have a roommate, they'll be in your class. Okay. And also, the, uh, we also have floor proctors, which help the kind of like residence assistants and they help the dorm director keep, I guess, order in the dorm. Uh, we're standing here in the student union building. This is where students can come after school and on the weekends to kind of just chill out. This is kind of the den of the campus. Um, we have couches, as you can see, and pool tables and foosball. We also have an Xbox 360. Which is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and um, boarders can just come here on the weekends when you know, they don't want to be in their dorm room. We're at Lake Placid. Um, it's used for many things. One thing we use it for is sometimes go canoeing and fishing. And also, sometimes biology classes will come out here and do some labs. And also, the middle school science will do some classes out here. We're on the quad at St. Bernard. This is usually a place where students come after school or after study hall and just hang out. Um, we also have our astronomy club out here. We'll bring the telescope out and just look at the stars and different constellations. Also, I do think the quad is one of the most popular places on campus. Because especially after study hall, the boys and girls can come out here and intermix and just catch up on the day's events, which I always like to do. Now this would be study hall at night? Yes, we have study hall that's required for all boarders from 7 to 9. When you're a senior and your grades are good enough, um, you only have to go to study hall from 7 to 8. Okay, and study hall runs from 7 to 9. What's the, what's the rest of the night like after study hall? After what time study do you, hall, what time's lights out? Uh, lights out is at 10.30, but we have head count at 9.30. And then after head count at 10 o'clock is what we call quiet time, and you go to your own room and you can still have your lights on, you know, be on the internet or whatever. And at 10:30 is when everything shuts out. Time for bed. This is the library, and we can't go in right now because Latin three and four are in session right now. Latin. Um, Latin three and four, you're not required to take, but it's kind of a goal here at St. Bernard. If you complete all four years, you get a wooden sword, and it's symbolic of. Back in ancient Roman times, gladiators, when they would be set free from being a gladiator, <laughs> they would be given a wooden sword to, as a symbol of their freedom. So this is kind of give you a sword symbolically that you're free from Latin at St. Bernard. <laughs> this is the athletic fields of St. Bernard. This field was built around 1996 for the Olympics in Atlanta. The Argentina team came and was looking for a small city that was secluded where they could practice. And this happened to be the spot. Um, in recent years, we've added the bleachers and the concession stand. And also behind my shoulder, we have the um, baseball field. Mm -hmm. To my right is the softball, and farther right is the tennis courts. And what's the biggest sport that the most students participate in here at St. Bernard's? Um, I would say basketball in the winter, and then probably soccer, men and women's soccer in the spring.
and which one do people like to come watch the most? Probably basketball. Rowdy basketball fans? Rowdy basketball. Right now we are at the Ave Maria Grotto. And what, most of what you see was built by an old German monk. His name is Brother Joseph Zoltel. And the, way, the reason this is important to St. Bernard is because this is what basically put us on the map. And this is what got us known. Um, Brother Joe, his job when he was here was, when he was alive, was to shovel coal. And in his spare time, he would build all these beautiful things you see around us. Which are all what? Um, this, these are built out of mainly cement, but also he used um, there are tops of bird cages around. There are old um, jar creams or cream jars, and um, other basically just junk that he used, and he pieced it all together. And it and was it just his depiction of the world? Was it his way of of showing the world? Well, most of them, he, he built them based off pictures he's, he saw from like postcards and things. People now that we've come to the end of the tour, now it's time for sort of the, the million dollar question here. Um, tell us all about, tell the audience about why St. Bernard's has been, uh, I mean, you're both four-year students. Why has it been a great place for you to go to school? I think this has been a great place because coming in as a freshman, you're, you're all scared and you just don't know what to expect, but through the four years of high school, I've I've built such a family around here. This is my second home, and I enjoy meeting everyone and just being with people. Um, for me, it it gave me the chance to to shine, I guess you could say. At a big school, some of the things I could do, I would have never been able to. You know, I've I always wanted to be on the journalism staff, and this year is the first time I got the chance to do that, and I'm the editor now. So I mean, at a big school, it never would have happened. So I like the opportunities I've gotten by coming here.